first off, let me ask about Dee Dee. He had the surgery today. Were you given any timetable by the doctors on how the surgery went? And best case scenario, when he would get back? Surgery went as expected, no surprises. And, uh, you know, anywhere from June to August, you'll be dealing with. It's an uncertain time frame that way because, you know, you have to play it out. But uh, it could be sometime in June and, and uh, July or August. We'll just have to wait to see. Um, so, we obviously, it's important how we strategize our next move is our, our uh, pro scouting meetings will start next week, October 22, 24, and we'll work through all opportunities, and clearly that will be an important discussion, whether you just bring our best player now standing right now is Liber Torres, you swing him over to the in second and go import somebody else, you, you turn it over to kids, uh, you got Tyler Wade on the roster, you got uh, Ronald Torres as well, you know, what do you do next? So we'll decide on that here as we move forward. Is is this a killer for you in trying to put together the 2019 team? Yeah, you do have the options because Glaber came up as a shortstop, but you you don't know if it's going to be a short time, June, or if it's a long time, August. And does that impact on how you solve this problem? You know, I don't think so. We'll just try to solve it the best we possibly can, and and uh, you know, I look forward to getting into the the meetings with our our front office, our analysts, and our pro scouts to you know determine like what the best idea concepts are and we'll throw them on the board and vet them and, and try to prep them out. Now, moving forward, uh, I know you can't talk about other teams, players. So let's talk about yours. Do you envision Greg Bird being part of the team in Tampa trying to win a job? Uh, yeah, if our roster stays as is, Luke Boyd's going to have an opportunity to, uh, to reinforce what he just showed, which I believe was the best bat moved at the deadline. Who would have saw that coming? Obviously, with all the uh, the terrific players that had been moved, and then um, and then Greg Bird showing an opportunity of resuscitating and moving forward and, and finding a way to reestablish himself. So, um, you know, 2019 is going to be a whole new ball game, and and so you know, two people approaching it differently. One trying to to reinforce this is real, and the other one trying to show last year's 2018 season wasn't. Obviously, um, you said you're not only doubling down but tripling down on Gary Sanchez before the season ended. He had a pretty good postseason. Um, were you concerned about you know hitting under 200 and and the, the I think 17 pass balls? Did that give you some pause as you move forward? No, I believe in Gary Sanchez. Uh, it's clearly up to us to, to continue to find ways to unlock uh, what he's capable of. In 2018, obviously, it wasn't what year we. Uh, would have thought, but we know that uh, what he's capable of doing. And I, I, you know, I'm already getting phone calls. To be honest, you know, cl club is trying to knock on our door to see if uh, he's available, uh, and he's not. So, uh, um, you know, that reinforces, I think, what people realize is his ceiling, his capabilities, and also the position weakness around the game at the same time. So, uh, I think he will be a difference maker for us. We just have to, you know, find a way to to get him back on track. I think he lost confidence over the course of the season, and but he did find his mojo again, I think, towards the end. And then the second season, I think we started to see a, a, a more representative, accurate version of what he's capable of doing, and you'll see that play out, I think, more so next year for us. So is that why you guys felt the need to actually say publicly that you're doubling down on him because you could sense that from a confidence standpoint he could use it? No, just I'll be honest with just answering the question, honestly, and, and – uh, and yeah, you know, I know there was a lot of oh no, uh, whether it's call-in shows or 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 in the media, you know, uh, writing what they were forced to write by the performance. So it was more dealing with uh, here's the question, and you know, want to make sure that everybody understands accurately. It wasn't really a subliminal message or a direct message that he could hear or pick up, because ultimately, the only thing he was going to get him back on track was was, you know, impacting the baseball like he's capable of doing with positive results and then and then having him take that big exhale. He never admitted to a lack of confidence, but I do believe that early on the struggle was uh, was bad luck, and then that transformed into trying too hard, that it turned into a confidence thing, in my opinion. doesn't mean I'm right. The injuries hit, and, uh, and it just started to be a lost season, but you just try to focus on the second season where you could do some more damage. And uh, he got back on track, I think, at, at the most important time, and he called good games for us and, and impacted the baseball more like he's capable of. So I think you're going to see this guy return. But, but now I was just really being brutally honest about what I felt and, and hoping that, you know, he would prove it at some point, you know, uh, you know that the patience on him was going to uh, prove 
Correct. I think we'll, now we'll have to wait further to get more reinforcement of that going into next year because he will be our catcher. Brian Cashman, Yankees senior VP and general manager on the phone with us here on the Michael K Show. Brian, in the Yankees' last game of the year, Miguel Andujar, who might be the American League Rookie of the Year, did not play with CC on the mound. You put the better defender, Walker, in. Can we assume moving forward that you guys don't feel that great about him defensively as a third baseman and he could be moved somewhere else? Uh, no, I thought it would be, he's going to be our everyday third baseman. I think we were just, you know, we were doing what we did when, in the most important games. You know, what we were doing with CC every time he was in the mound, we were playing Walker. So it was forced to do it different now. You know, there's a ton of ground balls that get moved to that side of the field. We did feel openly and I think declaratively when we traded for Drury uh, in the spring that we felt Andahar needed more development time. And that was not on the bat side, it was on the, on the defensive side. So. So I think we, we acted as we stated. He showed that he was ready to be an everyday guy regardless. Uh, that doesn't, does, it mean, does it mean he's a finished product? No. There's still, you know, growth, I think, on the defensive side, but his makeup's off the chart. So, I, you know, we feel like because of his makeup and his willingness to work and address issues and fight, uh, that he has a chance to reach that ceiling regardless. And so that, that means exciting times ahead for him and therefore for us. So, But at the same time, you know, Aaron Boone and, and his staff and is, is forced to make tough decisions and and the easy thing is to say hey you know what we don't want to do that uh, it's not posted as much act differently but no i think uh, aaron showed the strength to, to put out the best opportunity for us to win that day's game and it was a necessary circumstance for us and, it, and uh i thought he showed leadership by doing what was important to be done and that was telling a young kid we're gonna have to wait here and, and we're gonna let walker play this one and just as he did the last two months of the season Severino uh, was one of the top two or three pitchers in all of baseball first half. Second half, it wasn't there as much. Uh, Hal Steinbrenner was on with us um, about a week ago last week and, and said that, you know, when we were battling him tipping pitches all, all second half. Is that alarming that it, it couldn't be solved over a full second half of the season, Brian? And is this something moving forward that's a big concern with Severino? Look, it, it got solved, and then it didn't, and then it got solved, and then it didn't. So it's something that, you know, I think, you know, uh, would rear its ugly head every now and then. So I think it affected his confidence. I think that I think the, he telegraphed some things. Uh, you know, he, he got out the gate so great. And then and then uh, we ran into a club that he telegraphed some things to. They had picked up on, and, and, uh, and then I think that did affect him. And then he tried to fix it, and the confidence wavered a little bit. Uh, but he kept battling through it. At times, I think he fixed it in the end. He got on track, but but every now and then, this, these things aren't easy. We've dealt with them in the past, and they do potentially rear their ugly head again, and and it, it happens. And so it's it's obviously an area of focus that we'll continue with and and battle through because obviously, if you're no matter who you are, if you're as talented as him with the type of electric stuff he has, if they know what's coming, you're very vulnerable. Therefore, your club will be very vulnerable. So it's something we have to fix and get better at and. and in contain and uh so obviously we're aware of it but you know, being aware of it's one thing solving it and, and putting it to bed obviously has been a challenge now louis put this to bed but were you surprised when pedro martinez said on the tbs pregame show that he had been speaking with severino and that severino was actually hurt but the Yankees couldn't afford to shut him down because they were in a race yeah i mean i was i was surprised about because obviously he's not getting any treatment for this stuff so that you know, I don't know, he obviously hand checked it, and, and uh, but you know, listen, you know, Pedro's from the Dominican Republic. There's a lot of you know, you're always picking up on things and hearing things, and we're unaware even to this day that if there was an issue that he had experience and that you know, it's not something he conveyed to us. So we just got to fall back on how he wanted to do his business. You know, usually if guys are hurt, you stop doing their side sessions in between to save bullets and, and allow them to to play or you see, you know, like out two days he was barking in the in the postseason so they do it to last night, you know, to get get him off his legs because they have three games in a row. So there's things you do to adjust if someone's still playable in a circumstance but not necessarily at full strength. We didn't have to do any of that with Seve. And and therefore that would reinforce that, hey, if there's stuff he's hiding, you know, uh um, you know, it's possible, but, but he never conveyed it to us. And if, and, and if he did, we would have adjusted things along the way. Obviously, he reacted to it. We didn't. We didn't. So, um, so at the end of the day, I'll, you know, uh, not saying Pedro is wrong, but I have to just trust, you know, how the communication was with Seve to us, how he acted within that training room and the strength and conditioning side, and 
and it didn't deviate. So, you know, it appeared and his velocity was the same. So it just everything appeared to be online. And, and, and I personally call back to the, the telegraphing the pitches at times, creating the confidence issue and fighting through it and battling through it. And, and then focusing on mechanics more so than just going out and throwing. You know, I think he got off track for a little while, and then we got him back on track. And then, unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, it's reared its ugly head again, and and the results are the results. Uh, you said you have the scouting meetings next week. Uh, that being said, what's the main focus going into this offseason? What do you want to improve, Brian? Our starting pitching. You know, uh, uh, that'll be a main focus. Obviously, we have some free agency stuff going on with the bullpen, so that's always going to be a focus. But pitching will continue to be a focus. Uh, and, um, you know, I think our position player crew is really strong. Obviously, we have to find a way to address, you know, the – the needy information, so how we react to that is yet to be determined, but what's the biggest priority of your our pitching. Do you think you have to improve the offense at all? Record-breaking home run year in the playoffs, it, it wasn't there as much. Um, do you think that that has to be tweaked? Uh, I think I think we can tweak it by continuing to get some growth and address areas of weakness with individual hitters uh, by how they respond in certain counts and, and, and what the circumstances happen to play out. We certainly were horrific with bases loaded this year. Uh, and I played through the, the postseason, too. And, and, you know, but I think there's individual, individual profile things that on a yearly basis that you constantly are attacking, and, and, and there are deficiencies that need to be addressed and continue to be discussed and, and worked through with, with individuals. That, you know, if you can tap into that and improve upon that, then, yeah, you're going to get you're going to get you know, more consistent or better results. Uh, but overall, from the offensive standpoint, yeah, I think we're really strong and dangerous. And, but there's holes that we can shore up. There's no doubt about that at the same time. You have a, a lot of potential free agents. Uh, Gardner has an option year. What are your interests with Gardner? How about CC and Jay Happ? Great. All great players. Um, all to be determined. Uh, we haven't had our meetings. And then once we have our meetings, we'll make recommendations to ownership. And then you know, they'll set the dance tune that we dance to. Uh, but all players you talked about are, have been impactful leaders, and and uh, and we're lucky to say that they have been Yankees. And and what happens moving forward still is yet to be determined. Um, you know, because we have to get through our meetings, and obviously they haven't started yet. Any future for Jacoby Ellsbury with this team, Brian? Yeah, yeah, he's due to be healthy and, and back on track. He'll enter spring training as a rehab player, and you know, I guess it remains to be seen. Well, will, will he be? A de- you know, a player that we can deploy as early as opening day or is it going to need a little more time or not. But uh, that's to be determined. But, but he is supposed to be fully recovered. And, and I was surprised after I saw him come out of the surgery. It was like within a week I saw him, like, walking around. It was shocking. It's amazing how today's medical world works. But he had a significant surgery that addressed a significant problem. And, and we're hoping that we get, you know, the player that he's capable of being, obviously, as soon as possible back because, he saw that when we were hurting early in the year, April, May, with injuries in the outfield, and then late in the year with injuries in the outfield, you know, uh, we weren't running a player of Kobe Ellsbury's capabilities out there. We were having to rely on something lesser, and and, uh, and that obviously can get frustrating at times. You want to tap into the talent you have, and, and uh, he wasn't available to us, you know, obviously the entire year. All right, two two quick ones before I let you go. We've had Hal on a lot, and, you know, you, you your marching orders this year, give us a contending team and get under the tax threshold. Mission accomplished. 100 wins. Uh, you lose in the division series, and it was under the threshold. Now, Hal has also said, I don't think you have to spend over $200 million to get a championship team. But there's a perception out there, Brian, the Yankees are just going to throw a lot of money at this and just to take the next step. Are the Yankees going to spend like they used to spend when George was around? That's been a constant question that's continued on a year in and year out there. It's just because of who we are and the environment that we, we operate in. I think you know, we've shown that we're a very disciplined operation. Uh, we're not perfect. We don't make great decisions at all times. But I think we have made consistently good decisions based on the process that have served us well. And, and we're going to allow that process to continue to play out. And, and guide us, and ultimately, you know, how time running and his family make the final call. Of, you know, we'll give them different lanes to drive in, uh, and uh, and they'll they'll tell us which one they, they prefer based on the information they get provided. He's, you know, we're a process oriented organization, and and uh, we just have to allow that process to play out. So I, I don't know if that means we're going to spend a lot, spend little, but I do think that we improved this club significantly throughout the season. I mean, it was a great team that ended in twenty. Uh, 17 that was significantly improved at the course of 2018, and I think 
that was done in big ways, whether it was Stanton in smaller ways with Hap or or uh, even a, uh, a smaller acquisition in Blake that played in a big rut way and, and McCutcheon was a huge acquisition. I thought all of which combined would, would play well with everybody and, and lead us somewhere more than we wound up at. But I think those are all examples and manifestations of an effort of constantly addressing even the Hetch area one, which no one saw coming. It was, wasn't to address an area of weakness. It was more of a player available. For fifty thousand dollars, we can get him, you know, essentially imported in here, and he'd be an upgrade on Ryan Torres. And it was it, that would be the tenacity I would say that we we strive to be every day of reinforcing every aspect of the club you possibly can. And you have tough decisions. It doesn't mean it's no matter what you go get anything that everything that's available. It's not possible. You have to weigh the acquisition costs, the, the financial ramifications. But I can tell you the process and the intent and the interest and the motivations are always there to find ways because this player that might be available in the trade of free agent market is that better than what we currently have and if the answer is yes then what's the acquisition cost and then decisions get made accordingly and we try not to be emotionally attached to anything we try to objectively say is this going to make us better and put us in a position to to not be talking to you on the phone right now why other teams are playing and so you know we'll see where it takes us all right, one, one final thing, and I'm going to try to be creative with this because I know you, you're a tough one when it comes to this. Would you consider a player, Brian, that comes out and says, you know what, I just don't hustle to first base. I, I, I mean, is that some, and if somebody's an otherworldly talent that doesn't run hard to first base all the time, would that be somebody the Yankees would want to put in their clubhouse? Boy, you're really good at what you do. You're trying to, you're trying to Jedi Knight trick me in, into answering a question that that'll put me in the in the in in the abyss of MLB. So I'm gonna have to pass. But you know, I'm not talking about a specific player, right, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> so Great effort, Mike. I just, I, I, I just wish that we were in a position to be playing still. That's I guess that's the best way to end this interview and and uh, induct that question altogether. All right, thanks, Brian. I appreciate it.